Good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started. It is that time. It is that hour. And we're just so happy to be here. Uh, I challenge you right now to take a look around. Take a look around. Uh, earlier in the semester, there were many who were here, and there were many who were participating. But just like everything in life, as things go on and they become more challenging, it is literally the strong that survive. Uh, the Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. If you are still in the fight, you're still here, give yourself an applause this morning. You, 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 you are doing the right thing. And as we are now going into the season of Thanksgiving, you need to give thanks unto the Lord that the Lord has kept you, that the Lord is still building you up, that the Lord is still strengthening you, and that you will finish what you started. Uh, my granddaddy said it like this, if a task you first begin, never quit until its end. Be the task, large or small, do it well or not at all. And you are all on the path to doing that. And so I just want you to be encouraged and we've got a dynamic speaker today that's going to motivate and going to charge you up just a little bit more. So it's time for us to begin our worship service. Oh, let us give thanks unto the Lord who is our all in all. Let us give thanks to the Lord who is our help in ages past, who is our help for today and our help forever. We just are glad to be one more time in chapel. Let us get ready to go into prayer. Our, uh, our worship participants are lined up. Uh, they are here. I saw uh, Brother Timothy. I saw Miss Dottie Racy. And I see Victor. I think I saw him, Mr. Patterson. Oh, there he is. He's so, 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 so smooth, man. It's hard to just, just, you just look right past him. Uh, we are just happy to be in here one more time. Let us get ready to go to the Lord and worship. Come on, Tim, pray us in. Good morning, Shorter. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for allowing us to be in this place of worship and that you continue to watch over us guide us and as we nearing the end of finals prepare us guide us and carry us in I just keep watching over everybody thank you brought mr parker back to us this week and keep watching over us and amen Good morning. Good morning. The scripture will be from Psalms 23, which says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. Amen. Good morning. Can we stand to our feet and recite the statement of faith in unison? Shorter College is an African American. It's through and is shaped by the Methodist tradition of understanding of sin, grace, and the possibility for salvation of Christ like living. A shorter college embraces the body, dignity, and wealth of all the persons. 
and endeavors to be a campus community that reflects both the unity and diversity of the Christ. There's one thing, the thing everlasting without body of hearts or even power, wisdom, and goodness, the maker and preserver of all things, both visible and invisible. And the unity of this human head, there are three persons of one substance, power, and turn in the life, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who is the world of the Father, the very eternal God of one substance, Father, took man's nature in the womb of the Blessed Virgin, so that the two hold perfect natures, that is to say that God and manhood were joined together in one person, never to be divided, where is our in Christ, very God and very man, Really suffered, the scripture and dead, buried, to restore his father to us, and to be the sacrifice that not only for original gift, but also for the ash of sins of the world. Rise again from the dead, and took in his body with all things friendly to the fresh of man's nature, wherewith the sin of the heaven, and there sit until the return to judge of all men at the last day. We believe in the Holy Spirit, proceeding from the Father and the Son, is of substance, majesty, and glory with the Father and the Son, the very and eternal God. We believe that the Holy Scriptures necessary to salvation and that the Bible and the inspired word and for all right, thank you you may be seated Good morning, everybody. Are you all excited today? Really? How excited are you? <laughs> hey, you had the, you got the right answer. You got the right answer. Your announcements for today. You may have received this little flyer in your email, or if you have not checked your email, students, you have this, but I will read it to you for your hearing. Uh, Literacy Advocacy Program presents style and format workshops, APA papers. Does anybody have a paper to write before finals? Nobody has a paper to write. Aren't y'all lucky? Raise your hand if you got a paper. Okay, good. So then you should be attending the A.W. Young Library on November the 10th, which is what? Today, or you should have attended, but it's still going on from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. So if you're not there, oh, of course you're in chapel right now, but It has been rescheduled to go there after after chapel if you're needing help go to the literacy lab for help with your APA style papers so. Um, so make sure that you get there, so you can get those papers right before um, before finals okay um, there will be a job fair on campus this Friday from 10 AM to 2 PM. A link was sent to your uh, student emails to RSVP for the job fair. Who has done that? Who has raised your hand very high to say, okay, well, take out your phones. Because your email should be on your phone, right? So take out your phone, go to that link and register for the job fair on Friday. There is no reason why everybody in here, every student in here has not registered for the job fair. Shame, shame, shame. But anyway, okay, I'm just playing. 
Ms. Husky is available all day Wednesday and Thursday to help uh, prepare your resume. You got that done for the job fair? Okay. The following employers will be attending Full Potential Child Development Center, Alexander Turner, Safe Foods Corporation, North Little Rock Workforce Center, Manpower, Saracen Casino Resort, DFA's DFA Office of Child Support Enforcement, Legendary Institute, uh, Securitas, Security Services, USA Incorporated, Arkansas De uh, Democrat Gazette, ASAP Personnel Services, EOC, TRIO Program, Arkansas Center for Data Sciences, US Bank, AT&T, and Ms. Montgomery and Ms. Lockhart are offering extra credit for attending the job fair. Speak with your instructor for more details. A sign-in sheet will be at the door for proof of attendance. So if you and Ms. Montgomery's class or Ms. Um, Lockhart's class, then you will get extra credit. But I'm sure some other instructors will give you credit as well if you attend and give proof that you have attended the job fair. So I'm sure that other instructors will do the will follow suit. Do y'all smell that marvelous popcorn that's popping? <laughs> Somebody must know that is one of my favorite things to eat. It is popcorn. If y'all want to be, do something good for me, get, pop me some fresh popcorn and y'all can get anything you want. <laughs> popcorn is just my weakness. I'm just sorry, Miss Carter. But you got to work for it. After chapel, Miss Carter has popcorn for everyone attending a chapel today and she has some other items for you too so please stop by uh admissions to see miss carter for popcorn and some other, other goodies for uh after chapel and then the last thing that i have to say is hooray hooray school will be out in two weeks in two full weeks you well you have two full weeks after this week for full uh class time but when we come back after Thanksgiving, you will be entering into your um, final exam. So it's almost over. August has come and December is on its way that we will be out of school. You thought from August 23rd to December 6th that it was gonna take a long time to get here, didn't you? Y'all thought it was gonna take a long time. Mm -hmm. But it's here. And the semester is always almost over. So whatever you need to do right now to prepare and to make sure that you finish strong, like um, Dr. Johnson says, please uh, do that so that by the end of the semester, you can be very, very successful going into the spring semester. So those are the announcements for today. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I have a, a couple of major, uh, real important announcements that I needed to make, but I do want you to, to get the things that Ms. Carter has out there to give away to you all because there are things that you would love and that you would need, okay? The first thing that I want to do is I appreciate everybody who made their applications for Student Government Association. Um, I would like to announce our officers for SGA, our president, Ms. Dottie Racy. That's her right hand. Our vice president, Mr. Timothy Baker. Our uh, secretary treasurer is Estrella. Estrella, Dr. Gibber, help me out. Australia. Australia. Our chaplain is Ms. Carolyn Hicks. Our parliamentarian is Mr. Kedrick Wright. 
Our secretary treasurer is Ms. Chavez. And I'm gonna get it right. Our, no, I didn't say one of y'all, I didn't, I didn't, no. Our, so sit so I can make sure everybody see who she is. I need you to sit, ma'am. Miss Shorter, I need you to sit. Our Miss Shorter is Miss Chavez. Our Mr. Shorter is Mr. Aaron Johnson. Let's give them all one more great round of applause. You may be seated. You may be seated. I have given them a major, major, you may be seated. I've given them a major, major charge. You see your SGA, they will represent you. Let me just say this. Uh, you should be getting some communications out regarding this real soon. But we heard your concerns, your issues that you had. And so I do want to tell you this. Ms. Racy went to the president and had a meeting. And it was a number of us that was brought into that meeting, Dean Gibbert, uh, Dean Stewart, and I, uh, and some more people from finance in different places. And she uh, gave all of the concerns out to them. Uh, I also know this, and she really advocated for you all, and she didn't hold back on anything. Whether she agreed with me, whether she agreed with Dean Stewart, whether she agreed with anybody, she was very respectful uh, in her rallying for the students, but she really advocated for the students. And we, you need somebody who's going to, it's okay to challenge a policy. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay, if you need to know, it's okay. So I do want us to give her a hand because you should begin some communication before the day is out. Stand, Ms. Racy. So you will be hearing from the president You'll be hearing from the president before the end of the week in response to your concerns, all right? So I do wanna say uh, uh, we have a great challenge on that. So I wanna announce real quick, um, next week, next week, everybody say next week. next week. Next week, we will be celebrating Reverend Mary. We will have chapel over in the gym. That's, that's, that's worth applause itself. We will be celebrating Reverend Mary and we will have it in the gym. We reached out to certain people. Uh, there was something I wanted to do as a little snippet of a surprise, but I don't want to throw that on her anything. Anything that she is seeing, I want her to make sure because you have to be very careful. Our hope is that she can kind of be there. If not, she will be logged in watching, but, but, but we have a great hope that she will be on campus. But we are so grateful for all that, Mary, that Reverend Mary has done. Uh, if you knew, you may not know her as, they, her as well, but if you attended orientation, you saw her. If you've been here, you know that she's either talked to you, prayed for you, gave you a word of encouragement. And the one thing that stands out with Reverend Mary is, in our most, in our most frustrating times, she says, change your password to your computer. And you're wondering why, she said, I need you to put it on your computer. When you sign in for your computer, computer you might need to start change your per password to Lord give me strength. Uh, Lord, help me. I am better. Uh, bless me indeed. She said, because when you begin to type all of that in there, even if you're upset, your spirit will calm down. And she is correct. And there's a number of us who have tried that. But it's just, she's just an encourager at all times. And then lastly, we always so grateful to see Mr. McDonald. Thank you. So I'm getting ready to introduce our wonderful speaker. Uh, his phone locked on me a few minutes ago. So, but there is Reverend Parker. There is Reverend Parker. There's just a little basic song that I think that if any of us ever heard it, we should know it. There is a name I love to hear. Sing with me. I love to sing. It's worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth, and I'm singing, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, join with me, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved 
love me. One more last time. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you love him? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. I will quickly introduce our speaker. Our speaker today is Mr. Timothy Campbell. He is the recruiter here at Shorter College. Uh, Tim grew up in the urban city, right on Wolf Street in Little Rock, Arkansas. He graduated from Central High School in 2010 and is a graduate, graduate of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Tim is a proud Spring 14 member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Upon graduation, we heard that he was, he was successfully accepted into the U.S. Peace Corps program, where he served as a community health facilitator in the Gambia and subsequently served as a uh, chair of the In-Country Diversity Commission. Following his two-year tenure with the Peace Corps, Tim spent a six-month practicum with the Office of International Program Studies at UAPB, where he served as a senior advisor to UAPB's Peace Corps prep program. Tim has a wide range of community experience. In 2020, he served in the governor's task force, reviewing policies to help mobilize the journey to change in Arkansas. Tim currently serves on both the Pulaski County Criminal Justice Commission and Rachel, Racial and Cultural Diversity Commission for the city of Little Rock. Mr. Campbell's efforts to actualize goals for equity within the city of Little Rock has not been unnoticed as he has was recognized on the Arkansas Business 2020 250 most influential leaders in Arkansas. Let's give him a hand. So I, I need to, I won't belabor you because we do need to hear what he has to say. And, uh, and he is a go-getter, and he's willing to help anybody on this campus. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to some and introduce to others, Mr. Tim, Tim Campbell, hear you him. Thank you all, thank you all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. good, good, good. So I'm just gonna speak to you all briefly today about something that means a lot to me and I personally see it as a very, very powerful quote. And that quote is to see it through, to see it through. So the big idea of today is to push through in the presence of pressure, to push through in the presence of pressure. And we're gonna get started. That's my quote. And I'll get into that later. Everybody should have a handout with the poem on it. We're gonna briefly read this poem together. It's one of my most motivating, inspirational sites that has ever been put on a piece of paper. So we're gonna read that together and we're gonna start from the top. <clears throat> it says, see it through by Edgar Albert Guest. When you're up against a trouble, meet it squarely face to face. Lift your chin, set your shoulders, plant your feet and take a brace. When it's vain to try to dodge it, do the best that you can do. You may fail, but you may conquer. See it through. Black may be the clouds about you, and your future may seem grim. But don't let your nerve desert you. Keep yourself in fighting trim. If the worst is bound to happen, in spite of all that you can do, running from it will not save you. See it through. Even hope may seem but futile when with troubles you're beset. But remember, you are facing just what others have met. You may fail, but fall still fighting. Don't give up whatever you do. Eyes front, head high to the finish, see it through. Nice, don't that just make you feel like you can do something? <clears throat> Don't that make you feel like you can just say something you've been needing to say, or you can just express something you need to express right now in this second? That's one of my favorite poems, and I'm gonna tell you why, and I'm gonna break it down to why and what it means to me. So first, we're gonna break it down into the C, the C part, which is the personal, private, 
part of everything. It's the passionate power behind seeing it through. It's essentially the vision that you have for yourself. And you'll notice I said yourself, because a lot of times our vision has been altered and tampered with by the people around us. So that C part is extremely important when we're talking about seeing it through. So the first part of see it through is within yourself. You want to see within yourself. And I, and I know I'm not a pastor. I know I got some pastors in the room, but I believe the Bible says that the kingdom of God is where? It's within you. So the first part of this, of this piece is to see that part, of it, that, part of, that part in you that needs to prosper, that needs to inspire others, that needs to do great work. So that's the first piece. And also the second piece is the outside piece of what you got to see. And this is a harder piece because it, 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 it requires discernment. It, it requires the, the Holy Spirit to come down and say, this is right, this is not right. And those are very, very hard messages to listen to at times, right? So that discernment piece is extremely important because a lot of times we got a lot of clutter around us, y'all. We got a lot of clutters around us. Oh, even though our vision is clear as day, it's being cluttered by the things and sometimes the people that's around us. So that C part is powerful. That's the first part. You see this picture of this young man? He's looking. It looks like he's looking. You don't know what he's looking at. But it looks like he's looking at something that he wants to attain. And every day you wake up, you come to short of college, you got to have that same look in your eyes, that same glitch in your pupils. You got to have that same power within yourself because you've already looked within yourself. You're also doing the work to look, to look around yourself so you can see it through. So that, that, that internal part is important because we got to be able to, to discern who's assigned to us and who's just attached to us. We got to be able to discern who's, uh, you can get out your notes. I see some of y'all writing to get out your notes. We all learning together. You got to be able to know who's assigned to you and who's attached to you. And a lot of times in our lives, we got so many things attached to us. Starting being our phone, our computer, our car, our house, the things and the people around us that shouldn't be there. It's just attached to you. However, on that flip side, you got people that are assigned to you. You got people that are in your life for a reason and not just for a season. Mm -hmm. And you got to be able to discern that because that's the that's an important piece on you seeing your goals through. For me, I can remember walking down this cold, cold hallway, right? Very cold hallway. Passing up a lot of glass. And as a child, I don't know why I look through every window. I will look through every window because I'm a child and I want to see everything. I want to experience the world through my eyes. And so when I got to three or four doors down, I was told to make a left. And what did I see? I seen my mom behind a jail window. I seen my mom behind a jail window. So early as a child, I had to see it through. And sometimes seeing it through requires you to see people in your life that are in extremely difficult situations, that are in extremely difficult conflicts. And you gotta see them through that, you gotta love them through that, and you gotta push them through that. So while I was looking at my mom and her difficulty, she was staring back. I didn't know until now that she was staring back at me, looking, looking at her motivation. So here we are at this jail window, both see, seeing it through from opposite sides. And so I remember two, three weeks later, I go to school, school has started. And it was career day. Everybody wants to know what you wanted to be when you get older. That was a big question when you were in the second grade or first grade or whatever, and you had to answer that. I think that was my first time on stage and I was extremely nervous. I got on stage, it was my turn. I was like number 15 in line. We had 15 in our class. It was about three steps. I was very, very, very short. I wobbled up them stairs. And when I got to the front, 
An older guy leaned down with a microphone. He said, yes, sir, young guy, what do you want to be when you get older? I can only tell this man what I had seen. I can only tell him what the people around me were seeing. I couldn't see that far into my, to my future yet. So I articulated what I see every day. And loudly, I said, well, when I want to grow, when I grow up, I want to be a crip. I want to be a crip. And I did this at Word of Average Christian Academy. You can just document it. You can go down there and ask. So with it being a, 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 a private Christian institution, I just feel a big swoop of hands. Swoop me off the stage or walk me off the side. <laughs> And so here I am in this room, I'm confused. I don't see the big problem because I'm just telling you what I want to be because I'm telling you what I see. So here I'm on Wolf Street and y'all mad at me because I'm telling you what I see every day. And to the world, these group of people, the Crips or the gang members may be villains to you, but my mom is also in there, so they're heroes to me. So that see it through part, that see, that vision part is extremely important because the people around us who may be assigned, who may be attached, can alter what we see. The it part, and this is my girl right here. She pointed at the finish line before she got there because she said, that's it. That's it. And so for us, a lot of times, our it is that challenge. It's that challenge, it's that one thing that gets under our skin. It gets on our nerves daily, day in, day out. And the thing about that, it, you got to see it every day. It may be bad habits. It may be drugs. It may be, th it may be bad money management. But it's your it. It's your it. And, that, and, and so, so every day, you got your see part. And now daily, God has put in front of your way to see it. Finals coming up. I ain't got no, I ain't got no way to school every day. I still don't have a, a, a sustainable car. I still don't really, I'm still staying on somebody's couch. I'm still trying to figure it out. That is your it. That's your it. And so when it comes down to your it, that's the part you gotta feel. You don't get to passively see it. You gotta feel it every morning you wake up. You gotta go to the gym and you gotta sweat it out. You got to go to you got to go to that office at six o'clock in the morning. You got to type in, you got to log in and then you got to drink that coffee because you feel that it you're tired. You want to give up. That's your it piece. That's the hardest piece. And like I said, it's the part that you have to feel. And so when it comes down to the it piece, it may be your job. It may be school, but most importantly, it may be the people around you. That's your it. It may be an ex-boyfriend, it may be an ex-girlfriend. We're gonna get real in here. We can be real, right? Yeah. It may be an ex-wife, it may be a it may be a divorce that you're going to, but that's your it. And you can God makes it to where you gotta see that it every day. It ain't gonna miss it. You, it, you ain't gonna miss it. And, and, and y'all there together. And you got a relationship with that it. And you're wondering every day, how do I get away from this it? How do I just blind myself for a second to not see this it, this challenge, this, this bug in my stomach? It's my it. It's the part that you feel, ladies and gentlemen. But we got to know when it comes down to our it, I am a proud believer that nothing happens to us. Things only happen for us. Yes, yes, yes. So where that it may be hurting, it may be paining you, it's painting for you. It's the process. And that's a big word because one thing about process, you can't pray your way through the process. Prayer not going to make it speedier. It ain't going to speed it up. You can get on them hands and knees every day and say, Lord, remove this it out of my life. However, it's strengthening you. It's building you up. It's the it. It's the it piece, y'all. And so... I want to get into an it for me. My it all my life was illiteracy. My it was all my life was illiteracy. I remember four or five years old. Anybody in here old enough to know what the hippie program is? Mm -hmm. The hippie program came out to your house, taught you how to read, how to write, and do the essential things that you probably didn't pick up on on a daily classroom routine. 
I had DHS coming to the house. I had Hippie coming to the house. I was hooked on funnies. I had to wear the, the, the big fat headphones at school. They're like, what you listening to? I'm like, Jay-Z. <laughs> but in my headphones, it's like, hooked on funnies. Dun, 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 dun. Shout out. You know, and I had to listen to that every day. Hooked on funnies. It literally was my it, y'all. And I had to call my mom when I found out what dyslexic mean. I had to call my mom and my grandma when I got to college and say, wait, why didn't y'all tell me that I was dyslexic? Why didn't y'all tell me that? I should have known that so I could combat that. And sometimes your it, you don't even know what your it is because you can't even see it. And that was the it for me. And so when I graduated high school, I had a 2.6. When I graduated from UAPB, I had a 2.6 because it was an it that was on my back that I couldn't even see, y'all. So I got another speech that I won't get into called 2.6 where I inspire young black boys to not be the number, be the direction. Yeah. And I'll get into the last piece, the through part. Can somebody say the through part? The through part, the through part is the breakthrough, y'all. Yeah. Right. The through part is the breakthrough. That's when you, that, that it, that strength you got from the it, that strength you got from, the, from seeing negative things, from seeing positive things, to, to, just, to just having to go to sleep, still seeing it. And being built up by the it of it is the breakthrough. And you can see Michael Jordan crying on this championship tr tr trophy because he got his breakthrough, right? Now this breakthrough is some, it's some, it's some, it's some things with this breakthrough. Now we ain't gonna rush to get there. Let me tell y'all the pretense. So when it comes down to your breakthrough, we don't want to never rush the through part, even though it seems like the easiest part. Because if you rush your breakthrough, if you rush your breakthrough, you know exactly what's gonna happen if you brush your brush your, break, your, your breakthrough. You're gonna be appointed, and you're not gonna be anointed. You're going to be appointed, appointed, but you're not going to be anointed. And let me break that down and what that means. You're going to have a badge. You're going to have a car. You're going to have that house you want. You're going to have that marriage you want. You're going to be able to split bills and say, oh, baby, I got it. Let's go 70, 30 this week. It's going to be real good because you feel like I didn't got my breakthrough. However, on the slippery slope of that, we see a lot of people, like I said, that's appointed and that's not anointed. You've been around people daily. You see it when you, you, you see it when you talk to them. You see it when they pull up and get out their car and they're coming into the work. You see it before you walk in their office. That they are that they are they, they, they just appointed. They just wearing the sticker, they just wearing the badge because they skipped the C and the it part. And they just got there. And I'm here to tell you, people always talking about what Shorter College offers, but never talk about the actual talent and the productivity that Shorter College produces. The people in this room have seen it, have seen it. I'm, I work in recruitment. I know what y'all resumes look like. I know some of the trials and tribulations because you'll come and tell me some of the things you go through, some of the family issues you go through. I know what that looks like for you all here at Shorter College. So when you get to your breakthrough, I know not a, not a shadow of a doubt that most of y'all are going to be anointed to be in that position and not just appointed to be in that position. Because this is the part that needs you most. Because something that a lot of people don't want to admit, them blessings come with accountability. Blessings come with accountability. God just not going to hand you something. Them blessings come with car notes. Them blessings come with monthly payments. Them blessings come with building your credit. Them blessings come with waking up at 6 in the morning when nobody's up and the sun not even up. All you hear is the birds chirping. Them blessings come with accountability. This is the part that needs you the most. That breakthrough part. That breakthrough part is extremely important and it needs you. It needs you to push through. So, like I said, your breakthrough gonna cost too. That's another thing, the cost of a breakthrough that I wanna speak on. The cost of a breakthrough, I promise, I guarantee you, when it come down to breakthrough, they're so powerful, you will never see it on sale. 
You will never see it for $12.99. You will never get the biscuit free. You will never see it. Your breakthrough will never be on sale, y'all. It's a cost. And you got to pay that cost daily with your it. You got to pay it daily with your it. So in terms of me, what was my breakthrough? What do I feel like my breakthrough was? What broke through for me? So after being considered illiterate all throughout my life, growing up on Wolf Street, gang banging in Little Rock, all these different episodes in my life that I was too young to truly understand, I was ashamed of it, y'all. It sounds cool now, yeah, you grew up in a bad neighborhood, whatever, whatever. It sounds cool today, but then I was ashamed to go to school because everybody knew where I stayed to get on a bus and everybody just looking around at your neighborhood, just staring at it until you sit down. It was a, it was a shame factor in where I grew up at. And everybody asks, oh, well, where's, where's your mom? I don't know, I couldn't tell you. Where's your biological dad? I don't know, I couldn't tell you. So here I am, a young man being raised in this jungle of an environment, and I'm ashamed of it all my life, all my life. But I didn't know that this was my, my breaking point was my breakthrough. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So when it comes down to breakthroughs, you're going to have to pay the cost every day. When you go in there and take them finals and you get an A, that means you paid the cost of a breakthrough. When you get that refund check and you're like, okay, I'm about to budget this. I'm going to break this down. I'm going to pay these month bills up for three months and I'm going to be financially literate for these next three months. I'm going to get in class. I'm going to handle my business. You have paid the cost of a breakthrough. So I just want to leave y'all with the importance of seeing it through. Yes. See it through to the end, yes. till it's over, till you're sweating, till you're tired, till you need three or four cups of coffee. See it through. Why should you see it through? Why should you see it through? Why is it important for you to see it through? It's important for you to see it through because people around you need you to see it through. Your kids need you to see it through. Your family needs you to see it through. Your job needs you to see it through. And most importantly, you need to see it through. You need to see yourself see something through. Because all your life, you've probably been told that you can't, you ain't, you won't. So the biggest piece of that is seeing it through for yourself and seeing yourself and allowing yourself to see yourself push forward in the presence of pressure. And my favorite, I'm going to end by my favorite part of that see it through piece, which says, and you can read it with me. Don't give up whatever you do. Eyes front, head high. To the finish, see it through. See it through, y'all. Have all, have you guys have all been to church before, right? Most of you. And uh, the, the old preachers would say, there's two times when a preacher wants to preach. That's when he's heard a bad sermon and when he's heard a good sermon. <laughs> and so uh, that's motivational. It, it's heart touching. It's, it's heart wrenching. And we, the thing that you are so blessed, short of college students, I, I just have to say this. And he, he has said it, that to see it through. But y'all are in a community like the community I went to when I was in the fourth grade. When I was in the fourth grade, I went to a school that was a segregated school. Then I went to a integrated school for the rest of my years at school. And if I did not have a mother and a father who was concerned about me doing well in school, 
who after my first semester in that integrated school, when I was about to fail a course because the teacher literally just let me do what I wanted to do until my mother showed up and said, boy, if you don't start getting your work, not only am I going to get you, I'm going to put your daddy on you. And I understood that there was some motivation. Y'all live in this world here at Shorter College. Not only do you want to see it through, you have a whole community of people who want to you see you see it through. And you really need to understand that and how blessed you are right now where you sit. So if you don't see it through, is it not these people's fault? It's not your mom's fault. It ain't where you came from fault. Only person that you can stick a finger out and see the other three sitting, pointing right back at you would be you. So thank you, Brother Tim. For rousing our desire. You rouse my desire to see it through. All right, God be the glory, great things he has done. We're going to now get ready to close out. Um, you need to take that and register it with you. You need to take that and put it in your pocket. When you're feeling bad, just reach in your pocket and pull some of it out. And keep it with you, right? <laughs> Write some of that stuff down somewhere. So keep it with you. So now we're going to get ready to close. Reverend Mary, if you're there, we want to say hi. God bless you. We love you. We are planning to see you shortly. And now we're going to get ready to close. I want to ask somebody who can sing to come up here and join me. Huh? Yes, come up here. Don't leave me by myself. Uh, I'm not ready to do a solo yet. I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't trained. So y'all come on and we're going to get ready to close. We're going to sing our alma mater. And to those of you that are looking online, if you can come in person next week to celebrate Reverend Mary, we would really, really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Close to the microphone. <laughs> real singer, like right? you didn't get to the microphone. <laughs> come uh, on, y'all. Wait. <clears throat> you find me, because I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> One, two. Sorry. Make my kids off the scale. <laughs> Where are my glasses? Okay, well, we'll. Yeah. Yes, they do. One, two, go. Oh, sure, to we are love. Let us receive our benediction now unto him that is able to keep you and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be glory, dominion, and power both now and forever. Somebody say with me, see it through.
Somebody say it again. One more time. Let us say amen. All SGA officers, can you please come to the stage?